Hello everyone. So tonight what I'll be doing is installing a whole house filtration system. Um, I was gonna have this done much sooner, but I had to replace a lot of the pipe, which is CPVC. It's, if I can imagine, it's roughly about the same, at, uh, same age as the house, which is 38 years, and it might be, it might be a little bit too brittle. So I replaced that, uh, the main water line uh, with, again, CPVC um, after a certain point, because from that point on, it's copper, which I'm really happy about. Now, in one of my earlier videos, I also installed a descaler for the house, and I thought it was working pretty good to some point, um, but eventually what I noticed is that it started, it started to scale everywhere, like any downspouts, um, the washing machine, toilet bowl, and also started noticing some sediment that's building up in the uh, toilet tank. So uh, when I went to go check the, um, the, uh, the, the scaler, it actually was clogged. So that's why I wanted to install a filter. Now the filters I chose was from Culligan. Initially I got the larger one, uh, which is the HD200C, but ended up getting the smaller version because, it's a, because of cost and it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and it is the S200, uh, the S200C. And um, the beauty about these filters is that you can actually uh, change the micron size from each one. So they're gonna be connected in parallel with each other. Um, before it hits these filters, I also installed a, sed a, sedimenta a sedimentation filter, which is 50 microns. And then what I'll be doing is adding a descaler once all the water is filtered in the, uh, towards the very tail end. So hopefully it works out as well as, well as it should, okay? So um, let's get started. Another thing I wanted to add is that I could have changed everything to PEX and used those fittings and everything, but um, I'm not too comfortable with it just yet. I have worked with PVC and CPVC, and as long as you follow the instructions and making sure that the fittings and the pipe isn't cracked or anything, um, you're good to go, okay? Now, I did buy a, um, a three-quarters CPVC and started cutting it, and then obviously I forgot to inspect it while at the store, but I did inspect it at home, and one of them had a lot of minuscule cracks all over it, and it's too late to return it because I already cut the pipe. Okay, so um, so here's a picture of where I'm placing everything. At the bottom left is the well water tank and the flow of water is from left to right. So thereafter, I'll be uh, placing a uh, pipe that stretches across. The first one is gonna be the 50 micron set filter. The next two will be identical Culligan filters, one at 20, one at five. And the last one's gonna be a descaler. All right, I like working with 45 degree angles for water because it gives it a nice flow. Uh, from left to right and then from there I'll be uh, adding pipe that goes straight up in case I would need to work on the, the canisters I can bypass everything now what you have to, what you see here in red is the valves uh, in case I need to work on one side or the other now initially I was gonna put these close together uh, but I was a little concerned whoops I was a little concerned because if I wanted to use this uh, not only does it change uh, the filter, like you have to grab it from the bottom up and twist it, but you can also use this to uh, to to uh, move the switch over. So I have to put it a certain distance away so I can get to this one here. Here I am using pipe dope made by Rector Seal. It's T plus two. It's great for CPVC as well as plastic. So I didn't want to use Teflon tape because I didn't want anything breaking. Um, I do this on both of the Colgan canisters, both ends, that is. Next, I'll be using Teflon tape for a metal-to-metal -metal connection. This is going to the 50 micron filter. Thereafter, I'm going to be using the pipe tote to make sure everything is sealed and then tightening everything up with a wrench. So now I'm going to cut the pipe for the right distance between both filters. And then with this tool by Shark Bites, I'm just gonna taper all ends of every uh, pipe for each fitting. And then with a the metal file, just kind of grind everything down. So there you see a nice tapered edge. I wanted to make sure that I used the right product for the project. This one works specifically for CPBC and uh, it's a two-step process. So you have to place the primer and then thereafter using the weld or the glue 
and then slowly inserting the pipe, turning it for a quarter turn, and then hold it in place for 30 seconds. Now I do this on both sides. This one you'll see me again, quarter turn, and then holding it down, just making sure that if you do this, it's on a flat surface. I removed the canisters, so it's easy for me to drill. So I'm just pre-drilling the holes and then using uh, the bolts that I purchased and then screwing everything in. And I do this on both sides, making sure that everything is leveled. The eye spring filter sat in a little bit too deep, so I got some plywood, glued everything together with Gorilla Glue, and then nailed or screwed everything all in. And then thereafter, you'll see that everything is in line, and then I just welded the pipes together with the same process as before. So next step is to create mirror ends of each other, which include the 45 degree angle, the T, and the valve. So here I am just gluing everything together, priming and gluing, that is. I decided to use a CPVC valve. Now, this is actually pretty cool because I, as I'm dry fitting, I am marking each thing, so I'm not guesstimating. And this is something I learned from got to learn The link is above. Thereafter, I am just dry fitting. I did make my markings, so I know exactly where it's going to be after I glue everything. So with the same process, I um, chamfered primed and then glued both ends and then slowly insert everything with a quarter turn and then just held. My next step is to now cut into the water line from above and as I'm cutting it water will come out but I'll just collect it from a bucket below. Okay thereafter I am just dry fitting and making a guesstimate of where everything needs to be once everything is welded and um, with the 45 degree pipe that I created, I end up uh, with the same process as before, just putting everything all together. Now you'll notice that there is a problem with this and I have to go back and fix it again, but you'll see that in the next few frames. So right over here, you see me, I'm holding a pipe that has a T and a 90. What I don't show is behind it is actually the different depths of each side. So I know that when I push each pipe together, that it is going as deep as it can. So again, uh, just holding it and doing my best to rotate it to spread it evenly. So in this frame, you'll see that if I do a close up, I made a marking to know if it went all the way through into the joint, which it didn't. So what I have to do now is cut everything out. And I guess this is one of the challenges with CPVC or a PVC for that matter. And then piecemealing everything together with uh, 45 degree angles and couplers and what have you. So I found it easier to do it this way. So because I can't really twist anything with a quarter turn. So by using a coupler and joining everything together after gluing everything and priming, it will be easier for me to know. And there you have it. Okay, so here is the final product. I let it sit for about six hours before turning on the water and just keep in mind that on one end that I showed I, I did the same as the opposite end so I slowly turn on the water and uh, let everything fill up slowly um, this what you're seeing is the 20 micron filter and the one next to it is the 5 micron with activated carbon and that's really to help with the sulfur that smell or what have you and the last one is going to be the descaler so um I checked thereafter once everything's filled uh, for any leaks and I was very fortunate that there was nothing. I got a little concerned with the cold again one with just the pipe dope, but fortunately everything was intact without any leaks. And so here is the final product and I am very happy with how things could went. There you see moments thereafter once I turn on the water what it started to collect. So it's been about a week and a half now, and I haven't had any leak, uh, knock on wood. Um, I actually have a lot of this extra foam, so I end up placing it onto the pipe, knowing that there is no leak. If there was, I have it upside down, so the cutting is actually below and rather than upward. That way it would collect and just drip down. I just figured that if something were to happen and it were spraying in a different direction, it wouldn't alert my... Um, my water sensors okay so um 
I think that's a great feature. I will, although I um, zip tied it there because some areas it's a little bit more open because I do have it on the, um, the joint fittings itself or the pipe fittings that is, and uh, probably just put some zip ties all throughout. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, I do have three shutoff valves, one on both ends of the um, the filters. That way, it's a bypass. So as the water's coming down, it will just go straight up and then up there and then right angle into the house. So there's no disruption of the water flow. Okay, so um, um, I thought it was a great feature for that. Also, I chose the uh, canisters, uh, the clear canisters, as opposed to the, the covered ones. Um, Primarily because I wanted to see how well the filter is working and knowing when to change it. I did purchase a, um, a pressure water gauge. I do have one already that's installed onto the um, the well water tank. Um, and I opted not to put the gauge on, on the opposing end. I would just figure that if the flow of water is, is slowed down upstairs, then it's time to change these filters. But... At the same time, I can also be monitoring each one when I'm downstairs uh, to see how bad it's uh, getting or you know how worse the filters look. Okay, so I hope this helps out. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Okay, bye.